The U.S. Treasury Department's Undersecretary for Domestic Finance, Nellie Liang, suggested that the federal government's work on a potential digital dollar is accelerating. And Emily, you've been following this story. Tell us what's latest. Sure. So there were some comments. Um, and the important thing to note, the, the headline here is that the U.S. is still thinking about it, right? So the U.S. is still deciding whether or not to issue a digital dollar. They haven't changed their stance on that. But if you kind of like parse through the comments, there are some sort of interesting details about like what they're considering and what they're weighing. So, you know, there, she, she talked about like three potentially core features of a CBDC, like it would be legal tender, um, convertible one for one for other types of central bank money. And, you know, a CBDC would clear and settle nearly instantly. And then they talk about, you know, basically still deciding if we're going to do a wholesale CBDC, a retail CBDC, or both. We had Josh Lipsky on the show kind of defining what those are. Like retail CBDC is like, you know, using a digital dollar to buy coffee, whereas like a wholesale CBDC is like banks transferring funds between themselves. Um, there were some comments in this in this speech that seemed to sort of like subtweet, you know, some of the conversations about China without mentioning it directly. You know, she referred to um, the, the idea that like, you know, obviously other countries are moving quickly to develop uh, CBDCs and it could be used to avoid uh, U.S. sanctions and this is a way to keep the U.S. dollar, um, keep its position in the world. So yeah, it's nothing nothing super concrete about it, but like just that the U.S. is working on it and that Treasury is also like leading a CBDC working group to explore this. That's the, that's, that's that's the basic TLDR of that speech. It, it's still a long way, right? I mean, they, they, the people yeah. who are, are reading this uh, shouldn't get their hopes up that, that, that they'll be walking around with the digital wallet by the end of the year to buy their groceries. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many people are hoping for that, but <laughs> for those that are, they should not get their hopes up. Yeah, there, there's that's definitely no indication that this is happening anytime soon. That they are, like, I mean, regulators are going after stable coins like BUSD. Uh, there's more heightened scrutiny on the private stable coin front, but they might be more open to a U.S. made CBDC. Yeah, it's a great question. So this, the, her comments do mention stable coins. Again, like everything in this speech is very like hypothetical. It's like, if we had a CBDC, we would do this and this and that. So you can't read too much into it, but stable coins are mentioned kind of as like, as potential like interoperability. So the, the way that I read it is that she mentioned stable coins as something that could coexist with CBDCs. But like, I think your point is actually, it's really interesting because I do think there are certain people that see CBDCs as an alternative to stable coins. Like they think stable coins are dicey and and a CBDC, you know, would somehow be this like central bank backed alternative to them. Although the speech does at least like suggest a world in which both could coexist. Yeah. Well, a new Coinbase survey of 2000, over 2000 American adults, just 20% own crypto and the vast majority see an urgent need to update the financial system. Um, is, is that something that the U.S. government would, you know, act on. Yeah. So like, let's just talk about this for a second. <laughs> so Coinbase obviously has very clear motivations for this survey, right? Because Coinbase is right now, you know, very loudly advocating that the U.S. and the SEC sort of needs to get its act together or crypto is going to leave the U.S. And so I think the point of the survey is like, you know, showing that crypto is really important in the U.S., which I think is true, right? And they, you know, they make points about how, like, Americans are dissatisfied with, like, the current financial system. So I think, like, the survey is is useful. I mean, obviously, there are some questions about the methodology because, you know, they survey, I think, what do they say, like, over 2,000 Americans, and they come up with a number 20%, right? And then they extrapolate from that that 50 million Americans have crypto, which is a pretty big leap, you know? Um, so I don't know if I would take these numbers too literally, but I think the intent of the survey and the general message of the survey is useful, which is that crypto is here in America. It's not going anywhere. And, you know, the U.S. government kind of needs to figure out how to deal with it. I think that's kind of what they're trying to say with this. But nonetheless, I mean, when, it, when you get these outrageous numbers, like 20 percent of the whole U.S., I mean, I, 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 which I find hard to believe because people are always asking me, what is crypto? And if 20 percent, it's more than it's more than 80 percent of the people I run into. Um, so is this uh, does this actually defeat the purpose in many ways of, of doing it like they can if you can't take it seriously, does it does it even hurt to like have these things go out there and say, oh, yeah, you know, like 100 percent of all of our customers use crypto. Therefore, yeah. it's 100 percent of everybody in America and you should do this. I mean, like the policymakers know better, correct? 
I mean, I think maybe. Uh, do they? Someday. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, you know what? I as think... I said those words, I was like, wait, we got some dumb ones. <laughs> I mean, I think, again, you know, I, I, look, Coinbase is very clear the, how they got this survey, who they surveyed. So if you take one second to look at it, you're like, OK, maybe it's not exactly 50 million people. So I don't think they're doing anything like really deceptive. But again, this is sort I, I see this as kind of part of their campaign to be like, you know, crypto is important in the U.S. Please pay attention to it. Please get your act together mm-hmm. or we're going to lose out to other jurisdictions. I think that's kind of the symbolic message of the survey. One last question for you, Emily. Do you think you could just reflect on the state of regulatory uncertainty in the United States and what it means for U.S. crypto businesses? Yeah, I mean, so that's kind of part of this whole thing, right? We just talked uh, earlier about what's happening in Dubai. You know, now Dubai has this licensing regime. Hong Kong, it's just so much news from Hong Kong about, you know, how they want to kind of be a crypto hub. Um, I've been talking about Japan nonstop, right? So there's just like, it's just a very interesting trend right now where you have basically, it's, it feels like every day, bad news from the SEC. And I think the problem with the SEC approach isn't that it's too strict, is that it's too confusing. Like people don't understand why the SEC is doing this and why they're not doing that and why they're doing it at this time. And meanwhile, you have these other jurisdictions kind of like, you know, establishing a clear and concise regulatory framework. So there are these two parallel trends. And again, I think that's what Coinbase is trying to do with the survey is to be like, come on, America, like, you know, if, if you if we don't have our regulatory clarity and if we don't have like clear rules of the road, like people will just go elsewhere, right? There are a lot of other options right now. 